Hi everyone, it's Phil from 3DP UK. So um, just doing a very, very quick video today. Uh, once again on the Anycubic Cobra Max, but this time we're gonna go into a bit more around like the general maintenance of the machine itself. So as you all know, when you receive it, um, it's very minimal um, involvement in terms of putting it together. It's literally two bolts on either side of the main frame. Um, and maybe tightening up some of the eccentric nuts and uh, the tensioning of the belts. Now, the most important thing to remember that after you've carried out the uh, bed leveling, um, you pretty much run away and start printing. Um, nine times out of 10, you don't have too many issues, especially with some of the profiles, including my, my own, uh, which I always post up on, um, my link tree and um, check out some of my other videos with the access to that you can request access and more than happy to share that with you um, I like to share with the community um, so what I'm, what I'm going to go through in this particular video is maybe a few months down the line you start to notice some changes to your prints now most people will look at um, things like their Cura profile or, or whatever slicer they're using now if you find that you make some slight changes to your Cura profile or your Slicer profile and it still seems to be um, a bit of an issue, what you want to do is um, go back to the machine itself. Now, it's either going to be something you're doing Slicer-wise or it could be mechanical. Now, if it's mechanical, it's the machine itself. Now, some simple quick checks really over this machine. You want to be focusing on what you first did when you first received the machine. Um, what you want to have a look at is, is my bed wobbling? As you can see, mine's quite sturdy. Um, I've got the machine off, um, but I'm going to push quite slowly. Um, just move the bed backwards and forwards, but try not to put any charge on it. Um, as you're doing that, just look at the belts here on either side. What you want to do is take it right to the very back of the machine. Like I say, nice and slow, not to put any charge onto the motherboard. And you hear the click of the uh, the end switch. What you want to do is just take a quick look along the belts. Now, um, what I tend to do is just turn them over, and and you get a good indication as to like the the um, the actual look of the belts by turning over and seeing the teeth. Now, obviously, you can't see underneath inside the actual frame itself, but you would pretty much guarantee that however it looks here is pretty much what it's going to look like underneath you would hope now um in this case you've got on the anycubic cobra max you have two tension belts three including the one on the actual frame of the hot end um now what i always tend to do i tend to do it at least once a month um, and also depending on how frequently you're using your machine. Now, if you're using it day in, day out, and you're doing long prints, I would say increase your maintenance. Now, your maintenance can be several things, really. So you wanna look at electrical components. Have you knocked any of your cables over the last few weeks of use? Um, it's easy to do. Are, are any of your power cables under any tension? You know, make sure, you know, there's quite a bit of weight on that. Make sure that you're not loosening up. Just double check all your connections there. And what you want to do is make sure that over time you haven't got any pinches of wires. Have, have you moved something? Has the bed caught one of the wires and pulled it away from its connection? Um, look for any sort of fraying on the actual cable itself. Is there any splits? Is there any damage? Is there any exposed wires? Um, now, quite a lot of people focus on the actual printer itself um, externally, but what you want to make sure is, I wouldn't recommend constantly opening up the motherboard, but you know, it wouldn't hurt. It Not only does it give you an opportunity to see the actual workings of it, um, obviously remove any cables, make sure there's no power, open it up have a quick look get familiar with it it also helps for future proofing of um if you have any issues take a photo of it take a photo of the motherboard if if everything's running well you know that that's a good standard place um double check that um keep it as a reference picture i always take reference pictures with anything i do whether it's 3d printing my work my daily work 
I always keep reference pictures so that if I have an issue, I can go back to that original photo. Um, also just check for any loose wiring in there, any connections that might not look like they're perfectly aligned. Just double check everything. Um, look for any sort of burn marks, scorch marks on the wires that that could highlight some potential fire risks. Um, very rare, but you know, it's good to check. Um, going back to the actual machine itself, what you want to do is just check, like I say, along the tension cable. These are quite fragile and too much tension can, can decrease the lifetime of it and not enough tension can obviously lead to slip in and you'll notice that on your prints. So um, as you'll know, um, on the front of the machine here, um, let me just move the camera. So on the front of the machine, you have these red knobs. Now these red knobs are your tensioners. So um, you just twist them left and right, depending on which you want. Um, right now, I'm quite happy with my tension. You just want it to be, you know, there's, there's a slight give in it, but not to the point where it's floppy and, you know, just that little twang. Um, right, so that's the tension. So you, you want to double check both of those here. These are a lot easier. Um, and then once again, slide the bed right forward, nice and slow, not to put any charge on the motherboard. And what you want to do once again, so that you get to see as much of the tension belt as possible, you want to make sure that you check the back as well. So once again, turn the cable, uh, the tension belt over, check the teeth, make sure there's no fraying. Um, mine looks fine. The other thing is, on these um, gear wheels on the motor. Now these dry, this one motor drives these two tension cables, which allows this big, big, big size bed, so the 400 by 400 bed to go backwards and forwards. What you wanna make sure is that both of these are aligned. Sometimes you'll see the belt go slightly over to the back. Um, can't really see, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, yeah, so what you wanna do is just I'm going to zoom in for you. I'm not sure how much of it you can see, but you get a good idea. So these two teeth here on these runner wheels, just make sure that the belt's as centered as possible. You can just move them across. Shouldn't be too much. Um, once you've checked the belt and you're happy with that, like I say, you can only really see the top one. Um, move it gently back. Just check the wheels out as you can see. Make sure that that belt's not rubbing and you don't see, you would notice it to be fair on the wheels, there would be some like um, rubber sort of fraying on there. You'd see like a, a dusting of, if something's rubbing, it always leaves like a, a residue afterwards. So I always check for residue and dusting of like rubber. Um, so once again, moving up to the actual frame itself or the hot end. So you, once again, you've got the belt. Now with this particular belt, you can actually see the top and bottom on the, on the actual underside of it. But what you cannot see is the teeth. Um, that's the downside of this. Um, so the only way to really check this is to move your, so there's a bit of a squeak on that because I think I've got it a bit too tight. Um, so once again, you can, undo those eccentric nuts on the on the hot end you've got an eccentric nut under there and um, you want to make sure your wheels are not too tight so it makes that you want them free rolling so on this side it's free rolling but it might have just been where i've not used it for a few days it's seized up it's a lot colder in the uk so um that could potentially be that um but feeling the belt that feels fine the tension's perfect for what i need it for um what else do you like i say Double check your eccentric nuts on the bed. Underneath you've got, um, I believe, let me just double check. So there's six wheels on this side, six wheels on that side. Now the three on the right hand side of each roll is fixed. So you can't make any changes to them. The three on the left hand side of, of the rollers are eccentric nuts. Now be very careful not to tighten up one eccentric nut too much and one not enough and what you'll get is the bed will be slightly off it literally is it's not even noticeable to the eye 
but now imagine your print is going backwards and forwards, it's slightly off, it's not going to look right, you'll probably get some Z wobble. Um, so I always check the bed, make sure it's square. By doing that, the simplest way is use the frame as your guide. So as you move it forward, check that that is correct at the front. So I've moved it right forward and the gap there is so big. I mean, you could go, let's get a ruler. I mean, you could be as finicky as this. You could potentially just measure it. So what am I getting? I've got a about one centimeter gap at the back. Now, if we move it all the way back, no, my luck now, it probably won't be one centimeter, but um, I can make some adjustments. It's just really for a rough eye. So where are we? Zero. So yeah, that's about, I'd say it was just over a centimeter, but there's not much in that. Um, you just, if you had it at one centimeter at the back and say 1.5 centimeters at the front, you'd know that that was completely off center. Um, you want this as centered as possible. It would even wear on the rollers and it would even wear on the tension belt. Um, so once again, you use your tools that are given to you. So this tightens up the eccentric nut. How the eccentric nut works is that a normal roller will move backwards and forwards, but the eccentric nut will move slightly off canter. So rather than a full circle, it will move forwards or backwards, but still be um, a circular motion once once fixed in place. So that's quite easy to do. Um, I have a video on my YouTube channel with that, so check that one out about eccentric nuts and tension belts. So if you want a bit more detail, you can check that one out. Um, what else? Um, now, I would say also, um, let's move up a bit and zoom back out. So the next thing, um, you have two Z rods. Now, um, depending on how many prints you do and how often you're using it, a good idea is to check your Z rods for some grease. Now, I got some grease with mine. Whether you've got some with yours is a whole new um, issue. Uh, I don't know whether it's standard. I did get some of this. Now, oh, it's quite simple, really. Um, take the cap off and just apply a very, very small amount on one part of the, the Z rod. And then on the other side, the same. Only needs to be just a very small amount. Um, using the machine, raise your Z all the way up to the top. Do it via the, uh, the actual panel itself. And what that will do is evenly distribute the, um, the grease um, onto the Z rod. Now that helps with um, keep, keeping that lubricated. You don't need to put it anywhere else. Don't put it on your rollers. Um, you, you literally don't have to put any on your tension belts. It's literally just for the Z rod. Um, quote me if I'm wrong on that in the comment section. Um, what else would you would do on a general sort of monthly uh, quick maintenance of the Cobra Max? Now, I would probably look at things like um, the frame itself. Now, quite simple really. Allen keys are provided with your, your um, 3D printer, but I tend to like to use things like this. Now, what you want to do is, um, for instance, let's move down. You've got loads of like connections and bolts. Now, just they don't need to be super tight. Just double check that everything's as intended. You know, over time, when the printer's working backwards and forwards, things do become loose. Um, and we don't want that. Obviously, that would... Um, potentially cause some major damage to your printer, but also would affect your prints. Um, once again, silly things like checking your screen still secure, you know, even just the slightest little nick there, tightens it up a little bit more, keep everything secure. Um, moving up again to the actual frame itself, check that all of this are in place. Now, each one has, uh, each Allen key has a specific use just double check that that's tight um the other thing is just to make sure that whatever you're doing you don't over tighten you see that's got a slight amount of movement um what else actually on the actual uh filling head itself just double check that which is fine um literally go around the whole of the frame 
even go as far as checking your limit switches. Have they come loose? I've noticed recently, um, whoops, probably didn't want to do that. Uh, I noticed recently that I've been getting a little bit of a wobble on the uh, filament sensor. Now, um, that seems to be an issue over time with the sort of the vibrating of the the, um, the extruder going backwards and forwards. It, over time, it starts loosening up. Now, it doesn't need to be super tight, but going over to it, just give it a little bit of a, a tight. And as you can see, that's quite loose. Um, I've noticed some people have been posting in the forums and on the Facebook groups that they've lost um, the bracket as well for the cable to the hot end. Now, once again, that's also easy to do. Just tighten it up, not too tight. It does say about keeping it slightly loose so that there's some movement. Um, check your extruder. I took this apart not much long, uh, not long ago. So just it's still quite loose on that so that the motor's not vibrating. Uh, what else have we got? Um, it's literally just checking the frame. Also, at the top of this machine, you will have all noticed you've got another belt here. So just check that. Um, check that for any damages. That would give you an indication. Um, it's really just for timing. Um, you also have some brackets at the very top of the frame which are holding in some um, ball bearings. Uh, check that. Make sure that they're all in place and they haven't come loose. Um, so I would say that's a very quick, quick um, maintenance guide for the Anycubic Cobra Max. Now, I would say it's pretty much standard for most printers. You would check your tensioners, you would check your eccentric nuts, you would check all your cabling, make sure that everything's free moving, make sure that nothing's loose. Um, and if you're happy, crack it back onto a print. Um, I think with these simple little check steps, it's very, very important and to ensure a longevity of your printer, making sure that you enjoy it a lot longer. Um, ultimately, um, maintenance is the best cure. Prevention is better than a replacement. So um, I always think that anything like that in terms of cars and stuff, if you look after it, it looks after you and you can enjoy your 3D printer. Now, that was just a quick uh, update video for the Cobra Max. Keep liking and subscribing. Remember, every like and subscribe gets me um, all my algorithms going on YouTube. Um, I appreciate everyone that supports me and keeps supporting me. Don't forget to share me out in all these groups. It doesn't matter whether it's the Anycubic Cobra Max group. It can be in any of them. So it, it helps me um, build my uh, following. Um, hope this helps with everyone and carry on enjoying your Anycubic Cobra Max. Take care, everyone. Phil from 3DP UK.